Dr. Beninati, Dr. Scallion. I'm so happy to be here in the OR with you guys today. This is exciting. Awesome. Very exciting. And we're going to talk about this new system behind us here. Um, but before we do that, let's tell our viewers a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do. So we'll start with you, Dr. Scallion. Uh, I'm a general surgeon. I trained at New Hanover Regional Medical Center, and I went to medical school at Medical College of Georgia. And I've been here 10 years now. Long time. <laughs> How about you, Dr. Beninati? I know you're one of the newer partners. Right, so I did residency at UMDNJ in New Jersey, now Rowan, and then uh, fellowship over in Maryland, Annapolis, under Dr. Park. Um, it was minimally invasive and advanced laparoscopy. I uh, joined the practice about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and I'm enjoying it so far. Great. Great, that's good information. So um, I understand that this is a new Da Vinci robot here at Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center. Is that correct? Right, we had an older model for a few years, and this is our, the newer model, and we uh, obtained it about three or four months ago. Right, right. So, um, Dr. Scallion, tell me about um, the new system and what it allows you and Dr. Beninati to do um, in our community. Well, the robot basically increases our ability to do difficult laparoscopic procedures. It gives us a lot more dexterity. The instruments can move a whole bunch of different directions, whereas before it was basically one direction. And it should allow us to do operations, potentially that we couldn't even do laparoscopically now with little incisions. Great, great. Well, uh, Dr. Beninati, what specific type of surgeries do, would you perform with the Da Vinci? So it's, it's capable of doing really the gamut of, of uh, the general abdominal surgeries that we do. I do um, gallbladders, hernias, um, hiatal hernias for reflux, um, different inguinal hernias, um, colon surgeries, um, just any, any really advanced kind of uh, procedure in, in the abdomen, again, with the small incisions. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I'm excited. I want to see it work. So can we do that? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, Dr. Beninati, let's get started. So, Dr. Scallion, can you help us understand what's going on here? Sure. Dr. Beninati is sitting over at the console right now, and he's operating the robot. So he's able to maneuver these robotic arms and do very fine movements. Right now, he's actually picking up a suture and moving it between two instruments. So normally, this would actually be inside of the body, and he could be suturing on the inside of the abdominal cavity. Wow, that's pretty cool. It's like nobody's working it. He's, it's all so... But it's, he's at complete control and the, there's all kinds of safety mechanisms and the advantages are incredible as far as the dexterity. And you can see the dexterity with the robot arms and how how they're able to move and maneuver it's the suture. Like fingers. It's just like the fingers are actually doing it. That's right. It's almost like his little fingers are inside the abdomen. And the robot also eliminates tremors that are you could that are hard to notice but it makes the motion even finer and more accurate and more precise. You could actually suture very small blood vessels or small tubular objects that sometimes we have to sew together. Occasionally we can actually do an anastomosis of the, the bowel together if that was necessary. But you can see it's pretty amazing what he's able to do. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you, you, couldn't, you couldn't do this with regular laparoscopic instruments. Really? Or you, it, it's much harder, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. this, yeah. makes it, this makes it a lot easier. a lot easier, expands our ability to do different types of procedures. Well, does it cut down on the surgical time or anesthesia time? I would say for, if you're gonna compare it to a difficult laparoscopic procedure, then definitely it would cut down on the time. Um, I think that you'd have to answer that on a case by case basis though. I see, I see. The, the main advantage is gonna be taking an, an operation that you had to do with a big incision and allowing us to do it with, a small, inc with small incisions. Yeah, let's talk about that um, incision-wise. How many holes would you have? So it completely depends on the operation, but I would say anywhere from three to five small incisions would be typical. 
and the instruments then would go down through those um, small incisions and, and do the job and then you have fewer, how about the recovery time, is it quicker? So I would compare it to the laparoscopic surgery. So if you compare laparoscopic surgery to open surgery with, with the bigger incision, it's definitely quicker. Let's get a look at what Dr. Beninati is doing, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. So, Dr. Beninati, what are you doing? <laughs> Just operating the, uh, the console. So, so we're a short distance from the actual patient while we're operating, um, still with perfect view and communication with the team through the microphones built in. Um, the, the stereoscopic viewer gives us a 3D picture, which is actually a much advanced image compared to the laparoscopic surgery. Um, these uh, remotes allow for the fine motor control of the actual instruments and then there's also foot pedals that, that help control both the camera as well as cautery, um, a stapling device, uh, a lot of the advanced um, equipment that we use in the OR. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everything is done from this console, is that correct? Right, so typically I'll set up the patient um, and then break scrub, come over here, operate and then return to the patient once uh, the major portion of the robotic surgery is completed. And then the staff is around the patient, though. The patient is attended to at all times by other staff, correct? Yes, yes. typically there's three or four um, uh, uh, providers around. Great, great. Um, well, tell me this, are all surgical patients candidates for the Da Vinci robot? So each one uh, has to be selected carefully. Um, not every patient would be a, a proper candidate. Um, there are a lot of surgeries that, that would be um, maybe best performed either laparoscopic or open compared to robotic. Now, the trend is definitely uh, moving towards robotics. Robotic surgery is not going anywhere. Um, as, as the robotic community is learning more and having uh, uh, more education, better techniques, the by far and away, you know, I, I think a lot of the surgeries that we are, we have been doing in in different ways will be moving towards robotic surgery. Well, you obviously enjoy robotic surgery. So, what is your favorite part? I would say just with my uh, training in in doing the laparoscopic surgery um, and advanced procedures that way, this the robot really just adds to the visualization um, to the to the control for me i 'm able to control multiple arms, not just my only two so there's there's three arms that I can control with this as well as the camera um, and it just provides i think uh, a better care in a lot of situations uh, for the patient yeah. it's like having all lots of extra hands right <laughs> and i 'm sure there have been times where you wish you had another hand. <laughs> So uh, for patients having da Vinci surgery, are there special um, preparations for the patient or uh, does it change their recovery needs, anything like that? Um, no, it's no different than laparoscopic in terms of the preparation really. Um, the, for the recovery time, there are some papers and research out there saying that some of the recovery time is actually quicker. Um, so we're still looking into that as well. Um, but, but it's, it's a very similar recovery to a laparoscopic type of procedure. Well, thank you both for sharing this new technology with us today. It's been really exciting. It's different for us. We're outside of the studio. So this has been really great. Um, but before we close, is there anything that you would like to add, Dr. Scallion? Well, if you or anybody has any questions, feel free to contact our office. Um, and we'll be happy to do the best job we can to provide any information. Mm -hmm. And we should just uh, speak to the office, uh, the practice manager or? Yeah, the, pra the practice manager is a good place to start. Okay. All right. And we have that number and we'll roll it across the screen. So thanks again. It's been a pleasure.